Welcome here. I'm making a sourdough boule du pont for breakfast. Don't have any jam, so I have to make some jam. We'll have bread and jam. We have some eggs and some bacon on the side for breakfast. Our bread is boule du pont. In French, that basically means a round loaf. I remember my mom making it, and it's very often I make round loaves, but the dough consistency from maybe a uh, basic sourdough round loaf to a boule du pont, it's a little bit different in its hydration. It's gonna be awesome for breakfast. So I'm gonna try to let this jam cool because it's piping hot and my bread's gonna come out. Looks good. My kids are getting impatient. I need to feed them. So yes, from the title of this video, you can see I'm going to share with you guys some French cuisine and dishes that I had growing up, something also Kieran had as a non-French boy growing up in his home, and I hope that you enjoy. I do not live in France right now. I live on the west coast of Canada, and the closest thing to French for me is Quebec. I would love to visit Quebec someday and brush up on my French all the more so there, but for now I can stay at home and do it in online class form, as well as there are people in my uh, area who speak French, which is really cool. For breakfast, we did have boule du pont, as well as served it with some local bacon and eggs. We had some fruit on hand as well and our jam and of course butter it's filling it's yummy it's easy for the kids to eat uh, and feel very full and satisfied from i'm going to put my bread aside as well as my jam this is just my simple refrigerator frozen berry jam and if you want to know how to make it i can link that video down below my mom her grandmother made really good pancakes and she was a full-on french woman and she did not make um from what i know she did not make chips she made just regular pancakes as we would know them today and therefore i grew up with those types of pancakes and not your traditional small thin chip so i didn't really know how to make it and kieran is the one who really has um, made these most of his life. He even remembers being a boy and making these. So he decided for the sake of our French cuisine that he would put those together and I would later make some omelets for me and Kieran to enjoy.
high school and I found it to be very difficult to understand and hard to grasp. I feel like this was just due to the resources and tools I was using. They were just frustrating. Therefore, I essentially kind of just gave up on learning French. That is why this time around, I am choosing to strengthen my French speaking skills and do so confidently using Lingoda. Lingoda is the new effective way of learning a language with their online courses. It can all be done online, anytime, anywhere. Lingoda offers online language courses taught by native level and certified teachers and a structured curriculum. What if I told you with Lingoda's Sprint Challenge, you would be able to easily and effectively grow in a language of your choice that they offer in literally just 60 days. Plus, you can get 50% cash back or more credits if you complete all 30 classes in 60 days. P.S. It's a lot of fun. To start, you're going to simply choose your language, book a class that works with your schedule and not against it. I'm a busy mom, so I have to be like really particular about when I do certain things, so I love how flexible Lingoda is. And you can seriously start learning from home. This language learning method works really well for me because honestly, it's really easy to stick to. It's extremely enjoyable to do and as you go along and see the progress you make it's really exciting 2024 is the year that we can reach our language goals and I've made it even easier for you with a coupon code use code Sarah for an exclusive $25 discount the link and all the other information you need is in the description box when it comes to stuffing and topping our crepes it is uh, very wild there's no particular way that we do it except we always want to have some sort of fresh fruit and a whipped cream. So for my younger kids, I'm rolling the crepes. I am going to um, give them a fork so they can eat it. Those are for my little ones. And then for my older ones, they all have it a little different. Some of them like strawberries inside, some of them like maple syrup on top, some people like whipped cream inside, others like um, chocolate sprinkles through the top and their maple syrup. They all have them very differently, but I enjoy it because they're simple to um, put together. They are eaten very quickly because they taste so good and they keep my kids nice and full because of the eggs, which speaking of, it's time for me to make mine and Kieran's lunch. So we decided to have omelets. I remember omelets growing up being a, honestly, a special food. That was something you would have on a weekend when you had more time to make it. And it was actually usually my dad who would make it because he really enjoyed a good omelet. So we have some local eggs that I am just scrambling with my fork. I don't use a whisk because I don't want it to be bubbly. I don't want to add air to the eggs. I need it to stay quite solid. So we have a nice kind of egg sheet to work with. And then for my inside uh, stuffings, or I think this one's Kieran's, but we had it pretty much the same. I have some ham that I had diced up that I was going to put on, as well as some basil from our basil plant. I also always have certain things in the freezer for omelets or egg skillets or egg bites. So frozen spinach, it just easily goes on, easily cooks. And then I also have a bag of veggies such as red onion, green onion, a bunch of peppers, um, and it's just easy to take out and use for these types of dishes. I'm going to grate some Swiss on top if you didn't know, Swiss is naturally lactose free. So it's something that I can have and not have any tummy aches from and it tastes so good. So this one's for Kieran. He usually serves it just with salt, pepper, sometimes a bit of a sriracha or cayenne pepper. And then it's my turn. So if you don't know what omelet means, it pretty much means a small, thin plate or dish. And I feel like they call it that because when the eggs are all cooked and they're sitting on the bottom, it really does look like a small dish. So I'm going to uh, put together my own and then serve it just with some salt and pepper. Okay, while I'm cleaning up from lunch and breakfast, because I can't say I fully finished that, I thought I would just talk about French and like being French and what that looked like for us growing up. My mom homeschooled us and she is 100% French. So in a lot of our studies that we did in homeschool, we learned a lot about kind of like our culture, where we came from, 
what it looked like historically and what it looks like now, more like postmodern. There was also aspects of just our daily life that you could classify as uh, being very French. A lot of that was in our meals. I loved uh, certain meals my mom would make. Her beef bouillon, super good. Potatoes au gratin, my mom would make and I didn't like it. I even still, not gonna lie, I still am like, mm. it's the top layer. I love that top layer of like potato cheese. So underneath I'm like, nah, I don't want it. It's the top layer. It's like the top of a muffin. It's just the best part. Why would I want any of the other parts? We also did a lot of French events in our area where a bunch of French people would come together and we would celebrate uh, France and Quebecois. They were all honestly really cool and meaningful experiences for me. And there's so much of it that is so easily lost culture. It's kind of like you take a person out of their uh, usual realm and a lot of themselves uh, kind of dwindles away from them. But I think it's cool when you have parents or something that will just kind of continue to feed a bit of that culture and in a really easy and beautiful way, it can be through the process of meals. I love it. I find it beneficial for myself and for my own kids and then we don't just stop at um, French and French cuisine because that's just a part of who I am. There are more parts to me. My husband is not French at all so there's like a whole other side to him that we're also trying to talk about and share and find lots of like just interest and I guess like joy in. When there was like family get-togethers on my mom's side uh, there's a couple people that really spoke a lot of French I feel like and they always referred to me as Une très petite fille, a very little girl, <laughs> which I wasn't that little. I am now, like I'm more on the petite side than anything, but that's what I was called by some people. Une très petite fille. Anyway, culture is cool. Teach it to your kids and then they can pass it down. And a great way to start is just with food. Anyway, I am going to continue cleaning up and then I'll actually start prepping for some dinner here soon. Growing up, I feel like we had potatoes almost every single day. Potatoes are a very normal French uh, vegetable and ingredient for them to rely on and use well. There were stories of um, fields catching on fire and um, French people realizing they only had what was growing underground and that was potatoes and then they had to be super creative with their potatoes and how they made them and I feel like the French have such a wide um, variety of potato dishes and I truly do love a really good potato dish so for dinner we're gonna do fondant potatoes you can do this really fancy using special cutters and shapes to make something that looks like a cylinder for your potato but I am a mom of five and I'm very busy and do not have time for that and I figure since these potatoes are already in a round ish shape I'm just going to use their shape so these are yellow potatoes I'm peeling them I am going to cut kind of large uh, discs and then for the remaining pieces that I'm not using I'm going to dice them put them into a freezer safe bag I'm just using a stasher bag here and we don't do any food waste as best as we can so these are going to go into the freezer to be a soup these potatoes are gonna soak in salt water this is gonna help them cook and brown much better. And now I'm going to go onto my chicken. I just have an organic chicken here um, and I'm going to spatchcock it. And I'm actually gonna make this into a type of chicken Dijon. My mom would do this usually with chicken thighs and um, I just, I don't have time and I have this chicken and I'm gonna use it and make a variation of chicken Dijon. Yes, usually when I make dinner, I start early. It's 3.30, I don't wanna eat until like Five, but we're starting early and I take my time and I go slow and I give myself a ton of margin because something's gonna happen and there's a mess to clean up or a phone to answer or someone to take potty or dirty diapers so if I can just slowly get started on dinner then everything else will just kind of come together amidst my day. Potatoes are soaking. I spatchcocked my chicken. I'm gonna do a little bit of a different chicken Dijon. Um, I believe my great grandma did something very similar to this where she would lift up the skin and put, ooh, you, where she would put like tarragon, sour cream, mustard, all that through it and then on it with a broth. I'm gonna throw onion in. It's gonna be, it's gonna be. For my Dijon, I'm going to do a 
melted butter, and add in minced garlic, a good amount of tarragon because it's delicious. I hired a cook to come help me mix everything in my bowl uh, because I'm busy. I'm going to add in some pickled mustard seeds as well as a little bit of sour cream, salt, pepper, stir, and see what it tastes like. So far, so good. I'm going to add in some coriander because it adds a beautiful warmth. Sometimes I'll do a coriander seed, sometimes a powder. This time we're going for powder. And then I'm going to go to my chicken, lift up that skin and stuff it with what I have here. I think I even added some lemon juice as well for a little bit of a tang. And I'm just putting that under the skin. And then I'm going to take what's left over and put it over the skin. This is gonna lend a lot of flavor, a beautiful aroma to the chicken. I'm going to cover the bottom of my pan with chicken broth, sea salt, garlic, and then some more herbs. I got some thyme, extra tarragon, coriander here, and we're going to bake it at 400 for about 45 minutes. While that's happening, I'm going to get started on my fondant potatoes. These are just so good. They are a buttery, crispy, yet soft potato. They take a little bit of love, but they come together simply with really easy and enjoyable ingredients. So I've taken them out of the water, I'm putting them on a paper towel, and I'm salting them, and I'm just kind of patting them, flipping them over. I wanna remove as much water as I can, so these will brown really well. To a stainless steel pan, I'm gonna add a low smoke oil. That's avocado oil for me. Sometimes I'll do an olive oil uh, for extra flavor. I'm gonna bring the heat up pretty good so my oil is bubbling and sizzling and I'm gonna lay my potatoes down. I wasn't able to fit in all my potatoes so I put some to the side that I will freeze with the rest of those leftover potatoes for a future soup. So I just have potatoes all ready to go. I'm going to let that simmer for about five minutes or until the bottom is very crispy. You can see it browns beautifully. The smell is awesome. And this is where it starts to get really good. Grab that chicken broth, pour it over your potatoes, bring that heat back up and add in whatever else you want to. I'm gonna do some smashed garlic, lots of extra butter, I have sea salt, I have pepper, I have rosemary, and this is where you can just add in fun flavors. I find there's a lot of versatility when it comes to French food because it's like, you like a spice? Put it in. Into some butter is going to work. So I'm going to bake that for about 20 to 30 minutes in the oven at 400 alongside my chicken. It results in a fork tender crispy potato. I'm going to take some of that broth, pour it over my chicken skin, let it cook a little bit longer, and I thought I would steam some green beans once they are um, well thawed because they were frozen. I'm going to season them, use a little bit of butter, some avocado oil. We grew up having green beans constantly and, and I do really enjoy them now as an adult. I also have some leftover sourdough buns from yesterday that I heated up and we are ready to enjoy our food. This was ridiculously good. My kids ate all the fondant potatoes and I pretty much ate all the chicken. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for today's video. Let me know in a comment down below, where do you come from, your parents, your grandparents, what's your ethnicity? I'd seriously love to know. Thank you for being here. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.